Hello. In this video, I am going to talk about brachial plexus. The brachial plexus supplies the upper limb and is formed by the ventral rami of lower four cervical nerve and the first thoracic nerve. So it's contributed by C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1 root. The brachial plexus has got parts like roots. Roots will form the trunk. Trunk will form the division. Divisions will form the root the cords, and cords will give rise to the branches of the brachial plexus. The roots are five in number, as I mentioned, C5 to T1. And these roots emerge downwards and laterally between the scalenius anterior and medius muscle. So these both muscles we see in the neck. Sometimes C4 root will join together with C5 and this type of formation of brachial plexus is called as prefixed type of brachial plexus. On occasion, T2 may contribute for the formation it joins with T1 and in such a condition the type of brachial plexus form is called as post fixed type. Coming to the trunks, trunks are three in number, upper, middle and lower trunk. These trunks, they appear in the posterior triangle of the neck. Here C5, C6 will unite together to form the upper trunk. C7 root will continue to form the middle trunk. C8 and T1 will unite together to form the lower trunk of brachial plexus. Coming to the divisions now. On approaching the clavicle, each trunk will split into two divisions. Anterior and posterior divisions. So these divisions supply the flexor and the extensor compartment. The anterior divisions of upper and middle trunks, they unite together to form the lateral cord. The anterior division of lower trunk alone continues as the medial cord and the posterior divisions of all the three trunks will unite together to form the posterior cord of brachial plexus. Lateral cord contains the fibers that are derived from C5, C6 and C7. Medial cord contains the fibers, contains the fibers from C8 and T1. Posterior cord carries the fibers from C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Now coming to cords and how it is formed. So the, the three cords enters the axilla and are arranged according to their name or relation with the second and third parts of axillary artery. Lateral and posterior cord of brachial plexus are lateral to the first part of axillary artery and medial cord is behind the axillary artery. That means with pertaining to the first part, the names of the, of the cord do not match with the relation. Okay, so lateral cord and posterior cord is present laterally medial cord is present posterior to the first part of axillary artery but as it approaches the second part of axillary artery lateral cord lies laterally medial cord lies medially posterior cord lies posterior to the second and third part of axillary artery the branches derived from the brachial plexus can be grouped into two that is supraclavicular branch and infraclavicular branch. So supraclavicular branches means the branches that are given above the clavicle and infraclavicular branches means the branches that are given below the clavicle or distal to the clavicle. Now the supraclavicular branches we classify further into two. The branches given from the roots and the branches given by the trunk. So the branches given by the roots will be nerve to scalenus long muscle and longus pali, branch to join the phrenic nerve, the dorsal scapular nerve and long thoracic nerves. 
so these are the branches coming from the root from the trunk there are two branches nerve to subclavius and suprascapular nerve coming to the infraclavicular branches the lateral cord of brachial plexus it gives three branches that is lateral pectoral nerve musculocutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve medial cord of brachial plexus gives five branches that is medial pectoral nerve medial cutaneous nerve of forearm medial cutaneous nerve of arm and medial root of median nerve now the posterior cord gives five branches which you can remember by the mnemonic ultra u l t e r a that is upper subscapula lower subscapula thoracodorsal axillary nerve and radial nerve coming to the dorsal scapular nerve now this nerve is also called as nerve to rhomboids and this nerve pierces the scalenius medius passes downwards and backwards beneath the levator scapulae that is accompanied by the descending scapular artery and supplies both the rhomboids major and minor muscles long thoracic nerve otherwise called as nerve to serratus anterior so it arises from the dorsal aspect of c5 c6 and c7 roots the nerve is closely applied to the mid axillary line and supplies the muscle segmentally coming to the nerve to subclavius it is a branch given by the upper trunk of brachial plexus that is at the herbs point it descends in front of the brachial plexus and the subclavian vessels and supplies the subclavius muscle suprascapular nerve which is a prominent branch of the upper trunk of brachial plexus the nerve passes above the clavicle and disappears beneath the anterior border of trapezius it supplies the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles lateral pectoral nerve it is a branch of lateral cord makes a loop of communication with the medial pectoral nerve that lies in front of the first part of axillary artery it pierces the clavipectoral fascia and supplies the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor muscle coming to the next branch of the lateral cord that is musculocutaneous nerve it is a branch of lateral cord of brachial plexus that initially accompanies the lateral side of third part of axillary artery that means it lies initially across the third part of axillary artery and then it pierces the coracobrachialis muscle supplies the coracobrachialis muscle and the nerve passes downwards and laterally across the front of the arm between the biceps brachii it supplies both the heads of the biceps and medial major part of brachialis muscle just below the elbow it pierces the deep fascia lateral to the tendon of the biceps and extends as lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm to supply the skin of the anterolateral region of the arm as far as the base of the thena eminence means first the nerve supplies the muscle after which it becomes cutaneous that's why the nerve is called as the musculocutaneous nerve next coming to the median nerve so this median nerve is contributed by the branches given by lateral cord and medial cord so the lateral it has two roots so lateral root which is a branch derived from the lateral cord and medial root which is a branch given by the medial cord of brachial plexus medial root joins with the lateral root after crossing the front of third part of axillary artery the trunk thus formed descends on the lateral side of axillary artery now coming to the next branch of medial cord that is the medial pectoral nerve it is the first branch of the medial cord and arises when the latter lies behind the first part of axillary artery the nerve passes forwards 
between the axillary artery and the vein joins with the lateral pectoral nerve to form a loop of communication in front of the first part of axillary artery then it pierces the pectoralis minor and supplies the muscle and then ends by distributing by supplying the pectoralis major muscle the next slender branch given by the medial cord is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm this nerve descends downwards between the third part of axillary artery and vein the nerve accompanies the medial side of brachial artery it pierces the deep fascia along with the basilic vein in the middle of the arm where it divides into anterior and posterior branches supplies the skin of lower part of the arm and forearm up to the wrist now medial cutaneous nerve of the arm it is the smallest branch given by the medial cord accompanied the medial side of the axillary vein it receives a communication from the intercostobrachial nerve and this intercostobrachial nerve it is the undivided lateral cutaneous nerve of the second intercostal nerve it follows the medial side of the brachial artery and the basilic vein and the nerve supplies the skin of medial side of the distal part of the arm coming to the ulnar nerve it is a branch of the medial cord and conveys the fibers of from c8 and t1 in the axilla the ulnar nerve descends between the third part of axillary artery and axillary vein next coming to the branches given by the posterior cord of brachial plexus upper subscapular nerve it is a branch of posterior cord and supplies the upper part of subscapularis muscle so this is the first branch to be identified as the posterior cord is descending downwards next the lower subscapular nerve it arises from the posterior cord and supplies the rest of the subscapularis muscle and the teres major muscle usually between the upper subscapular and lower subscapular there is the next branch given by the posterior cord that is thoraco dorsal nerve so thoraco dorsal nerve is fairly large branch given by the posterior cord and as i mentioned it arises between the upper subscapular and lower subscapular nerve conveying the fibers from c6 c7 and c8 the nerve descends along the posterior wall of axilla in a company in company with subscapular artery and supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle next moving on to the axillary nerve this is one of the stout branch given by the posterior cord and conveys the fibers from c5 and c6 the nerve is situated behind the third part of axillary artery and on the lateral side of the radial nerve so it leaves the posterior wall of axilla along with the posterior circumflex humeral vessels through a space called as quadrangular space the trunk of the axillary nerve while passing through the quadrangular space it gives an articular branch to the shoulder joint then the nerve divides into anterior and posterior branches so the anterior branch accompanies the posterior circumflex humeral vessels and winds round the surgical neck of humerus under cover of deltoid muscle the posterior branch supplies teres minor and ends in the pseudo ganglion so this is the nerve that obeys the hilton's law next coming to the radial nerve which is the actual direct continuation of posterior cord of brachial plexus it is the largest branch that conveys the fibers from all the roots that is c5 c6 c7 and t1 it passes downwards behind the third part of axillary artery and in front of the muscles of posterior wall of axilla it leaves the axilla through the triangular space and in the axilla the nerve gives a branch to the long head of triceps one branch to the medial head of triceps posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm so these are about the branches of brachial plexus